In today's video, we're going to learn how to build activity rings similar to what Apple has for their fitness app in SwiftUI. We'll put this together, we'll talk about actually animating it, how to customize it, the whole nine yards. If that sounds good, start by dropping a like down below. If you're new here, hit subscribe, open up Xcode, and let's dig in. Let's begin by opening up Xcode, creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template under iOS and title this project Activity Rings, sticking with Swift as a language and Swift UI as our interface. I'll save it to my desktop. And first things first, before we jump into writing out our code, we'll get our preview up and running here so we don't have to fuss with it later on. I'll also change the color scheme here to be dark since the rings show up a little nicer and frankly, it's just easier to see. So what do we actually want to do here? So we are going to tackle three things. We need to create a custom ring shape. We need to create a custom ring view, and then we want to actually populate that in our content view. So I'm not going to touch the content view yet, but I will create two separate files for the ring shape and the ring view. So ring here will be our view. We'll come into here and build this in a second. The next thing that we want is a ring shape. So we'll just go ahead and create a ring shape file. And perhaps we'll start off with the ring shape. Now this ring shape will extend shape here. And for any shape, we need uh, a path. We're also gonna have a custom constructor, which is why I brought in that initializer. But let's bring in SwiftUI as well so it actually knows what the heck shape is. And next up, we'll bring in that path function. Now, this ring shape is more or less uh, you know, self-explanatory in terms of what the name suggests. It will be creating a ring shape and returning it. It's also going to be doing a few other interesting things. So what we want to pass in here is going to be a percent of type double, as well as a start angle of type double. This will have a default value for both, so I'll say negative 90. We're going to start our ring towards the top, which is negative 90 in terms of our angle. And our percent will start off uh, as 100, or it'll be defaulted to 100, and we'll talk through why momentarily. We're going to want to assign these to local properties, so we'll have a percent here. And this one needs to be mutable, hence var. And we'll have a start angle as well, and we're going to attempt to spell things correctly. For the third time, there we go. And let's just assign these. So we'll say self dot percent is percent, self dot start angle is start angle, and we are in business. So let's see why this is yelling at me. We need to create and return a path. So we will be creating a path, and this takes a closure that we can mutate this path in. And essentially, we just want to add a arc with a center and radius. I believe we can get away with using this one here. So we're going to define these up above. So I'll just pass in center. Radius will be radius. A start angle will be a angle with degrees of our start angle that we have passed in through our constructor. Our end angle, uh, respectively, will be an angle passing in degrees for end angle. And finally, we're just going to always have this uh, go clockwise. So what we want to do is we are going to set this to be false, or I'll say anti-clockwise. So that should be good to go. We just need to define all of these here. So up here, we're going to say we have a width, which will be rect.width. Height will be rect.height. Our radius is going to be the minimum. Let's spell this correctly. The minimum of our height and width, ideally they should be the same since a ring will be drawn in a square frame, but if they're not, we'll take the minimum of that and divide it by two. That is our radius. We also want a center, which is a CG point with a X of width over two and Y of height over two. And the next thing we want is a helper function to help us compute a end angle. Now the reason we need to compute this end angle is because we allow the caller to pass in the start angle. So it's not as simple as just making a 360. So we're gonna say that our end angle equals something. So let's add a, a static method in here that'll help us compute that. So we are going to say this is percent to start angle, or I'll just call it percent to angle, passing in a percent, also passing in a start angle. 
And this should more or less spit out a double, which will represent degrees of the angle that we want. And what will actually happen in here is we are going to say that this is percent over 100 uh, multiplied by 360 plus start angle. And hopefully I did that calculation correctly. It should not be uh, multiplied by, but we'll figure out if I did that correctly momentarily once we try to give it a run. So let's see. So we now have our start angle here. We can use that function that we've declared, which is static, hence the capital S itself. And this will be percent to angle uh, like so, passing in our percent and passing in start angle. And that is our shape for us in a nutshell. Now we also want to be able to animate the ring shape uh, similar to how Apple does it when you know the progress fills in for your steps or activity, yada yada. So we'll want some animatable data. Now animatable data is an associated type, so we first need to specify the type for this type alias. And then we can specify animatable data here, and we'll just need to specify the thing in the getter and setter to uh, get and assign to. So we are going to be animating the percentage. So we'll say get percentage. And in the center, or setter, I should say, we can assign the percentage to our new value, just like that. And this is why these guys, or percent here, needed to be a mutable uh, double since we want to be able to animate and assign to it. And that is all we need to do, if I'm not mistaken, in our ring shape here. I hope I didn't forget anything, but we'll figure that out momentarily. Next up, we'll move to our ring, and this is where we get to kind of use this ring shape and bring it all together. So we're going to create a ring here of type of view. Of course, we need a body here, which will be some view, and we'll want to return said body here. The way we go about doing this is by leveraging a geometry reader as well as a Z stack. So we are going to say geometry reader, which will be geometry in. And inside of here, we'll have a Z stack. And we want to essentially have two ring shapes. So the first ring shape will basically be the track is what I call it, kind of the dulled out ring shape. And we want to set both a stroke as well as a fill. So we'll say a stroke here will be a stroke style. And let's see if I can find what I want. So these are all nullable, I believe. So we don't want any of these other um, arguments, we can delete all of them, but we do want a line width, and perhaps we'll have the caller pass this in. It should be, as uh, this shows you here, of type CG float. So up here we'll say line width is going to be CG float. Okay, looking good. So we've got that. We also need a fill, and it would be kind of cool if uh, the caller could just pass in the fill color. So maybe here we will have this taken a uh, background color of type color as well as a foreground color of type color respectively and here we can just make this a foreground color I'm gonna copy and paste this as soon as I figure out why this error is yelling at me so this is a CG float and this is a CG font let's fix that typo that error should go away and we should be able to take this ring shape, simply copy it right down below, and we are going to adjust this to be background color. And on the stroke style, in this case, we will add a uh, line cap, and this line cap will be uh, perhaps round so it looks a little bit nicer. And let's see what this ends up looking like, and we will adjust as needed. Uh, the other thing we can go ahead and do is add a little bit of padding onto the Z stack itself, but let's actually give this a run and see what it looks like in our content view. So in our content view here, we currently have only our text. So let's go and make this a little more interesting. So we're going to create a Z stack with a ring and this ring takes in a uh, line width, a background and a foreground. Now, one thing that's kind of obvious that I forgot in our ring is what on earth happened to our percentage? Because we want to pass in a percentage for the second ring shape, which will actually be uh, the animating circle. So here I'll say animated ring, not tring. And this guy takes in a percentage and a start angle. Now the start angle, we're gonna stick with that negative 90, so I'll just delete it. But importantly, we want this to take in a percentage. 
So we'll have this take in a percentage as a argument, and it will be, I believe, a double is what we made it. So that should be good to go. We should get rid of that uh, error right there. Let's jump back to our content view and bring in that percentage as well. All right, so we're just gonna stick with 100 and see what that looks like. So line width, let's try 50, see what that looks like. The background is going to be color blue and we're just gonna add a little bit of opacity to it so it looks like it's dulled out. And our foreground color will just be standard blue. And let's go ahead and also give this guy a frame with a width and a height. Perhaps we'll just go with 300 by 300. And the rest of this we can get rid of being alignment. So that was a whole lot of talking. Hopefully I didn't lose anybody. And let's see what we get. So we certainly do see this here looking pretty good. Um, it is cut off on the edges and it's a little obnoxiously big. So let's, uh, let's see. Let me make this 50 and see what that looks like. All right. Let's give this a run to get our preview to update. All right, so we're looking pretty good. We've got a decent looking ring. Um, it'd be a little silly to add uh, animation modifiers and padding to this ring. We should probably just add it inside of here. It makes a little more sense. So maybe I can add some padding to this and I can say take our line width and simply divide that by two. And let's go back here and see if that makes a difference. Let me just make sure it actually did in fact update. Looks like it didn't update, so let's come back here. And again, in our ring, let's add this padding modifier to the Z stack itself. Come back to this content view. And we should be a little better. Okay, now we're at least not cutting off uh, on the edges and looks like we are good to go. Now let's actually get some animation going on in this because that's uh, that's kind of the cooler part in my opinion. So it's a little silly to once again have um, an animation modifier on the collar side. So what I will go ahead and do is add a animation modifier here and we'll just use the older version even though it is uh, deprecated in iOS 15. We're just gonna say this is ease in and the thing I care about is the duration to set here since the duration to fill this in is kind of the important piece. Let's disregard that warning. Let's come back here and we'll have some state properties up here, which will actually control the percentage. So I'll say percentage one is going to be a double and this will start off as zero. And we'll just pass this in respectively like that. And the way I'll set this up is, is on a tap gesture, we can actually update that percentage. So I'll say self tap this equals perhaps a hundred. Go ahead and hit resume on your preview. We're gonna hit this live preview option and I'll tap this and it'll fill it in beautifully like that. So let's go ahead and actually reduce the line width maybe to 40, might look a little bit better. And let's actually layer a couple of these rings so we can build basically what Apple has uh, in the fitness app, in the activity app. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. Let's see, two more times. We'll get three circles. We'll want three states here for our bindings. And let's just update these names so I don't forget. And essentially, we'll just decrease the sizes here for every single one. So we first have 300 by 300. Maybe we'll go 150 by 150. And if I'm not mistaken, the innermost ring is in fact uh, blue, which we should see show up right there. Beautiful. Next up, we'll decrease this one a little bit as well. Maybe we'll make this 200 by 200. And I think the middle one is yellow, so we'll change the color as well. Let me also update these bindings as I'm going in both the tap gesture as well as the argument that is passed in. All right, looking good. And let's see, let's see what we got on the right here. So we've got our uh, circle, it's actually overlapping the blue circle in the middle, so it looks like it's four colors now. So let's expand this a smidge. Maybe we'll do 220 and see what that looks like. All right, looking a little better. The inside one, uh, we can decrease the line width so it's not as uh, chunky and overlapping. So it'll look a little better, hopefully. And let's also change the outside color and then give this a run to see what our final product looks like. So. Cool, we've got red, yellow, and blue. That blue is still overlapping, so I'm just gonna make it a tad bit smaller, maybe 140. 
at this point it's just guessing and checking but looks like 140 is good to go so we tap on it we definitely want to fill in you know part of the circle but let's change the percentages so it actually looks a little more natural and doesn't just completely fill in so i'll make this one 50 maybe we'll make this one i don't know 70. and finally we'll hit that live preview option here we have some activity rings i'll click on the red one and boom fills it in like it should there's that yellow one and there is that blue one Let's make them all 100, make sure that everything is indeed working and good to go, and then we'll wrap up the video there. If you haven't dropped a like, don't forget to do so before you click away. Let me know what you guys think of using custom shapes if you've built something like this before, as well as if you want to see any other particular things in the future. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you all in the next one.